you know, we got to find a way to win one more game to get bowl eligible for sure. Um, well, but, it's it's not even finding a way to win the game. It's finding a way to not lose the game. That's true. Because we, well we, we talked about it last week with the amount of fumbles that we had in that game. If we didn't fumble that much, we could have scored more points, and we, we still won the game. We got lucky, and then multiple people on here said, you know what, we keep that up, then it's going to be really hard to win any more games. Well, We're going to lose every single game. And guess what happened yesterday? Right. We turned the ball over, and we, we lost. You know, our, our defense is, has been our backbone all year, and they didn't have their best day. I mean, looking back at it yesterday, I think that was probably the, the worst complete game we played all season. Yes, Michigan beat us 45-7. to seven. That's a different ball game. Yeah. But in my opinion, just I, I want to say Rule said that it, the crispness wasn't there, and that's very well stated. Like, we just weren't crisp in any any area yesterday. No. Um, and quite frankly, I think we've got to give Chuba a shot if he's healthy. So let's start on the offensive side of the ball. So starting with quarterback. To me, there's no doubt in my mind that Heinrich Harburg has a lot of fight. He has a lot of heart. He's not trying to give the ball away. He's – we've talked about this before. He's indecisive. And right. he, doesn't, he doesn't make quick – He hesitates. He doesn't make quick enough decisions For to sure. benefit the team. And what does on the back side, on the flip side of that, it actually hurts us. Well, and you're talking about an experienced offensive lineman, freshman wide receivers. I mean – Offense as a whole is yeah. just inexperienced. And, and Harburg himself, too. I mean, I've heard he wasn't even getting reps as a third stringer, you know, yeah. the last couple of years. Um, but something needs to change because yeah. every drive looks the same. I mean, we run the ball on first down for a yard yeah. or we drop back and throw a long bomb. I mean, well, <laughs> there's just I mean and, and so he – Very inconsistent. He was very, very off on all of his passes. He overthrew every receiver. Um, he, Except when he did – Sling one, hit him right in the hands, and they dropped it. We had a few drops, a few bad drops, uh, which didn't help. Um, but he was just, he was off his game. When your quarterback's off his game as much as he was, mm-hmm. it makes it really hard to win a game. It really does. Your your whole your whole offense is off 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 cue at that point. You just you don't find any mojo. You don't find any groove. And we never got into groove yesterday. Yeah, I mean Emma Johnson and Anthony Grant both had decent runs at times, and it was like one nice run, maybe back to back, and then. I mean, I, I guess you open it up for a play action, but it just there, – there wasn't, like I said, consistency. 100%. Um, 100%. You know, we're, we're relying on long, long plays, long chunk plays that have really been the heart of the offense this year. Yep. And that's not really a recipe for success to win games. Yeah, well, and I think, again, aside from Harbor, one thing we didn't do, you're looking at uh, – we've talked about Marcus Satterfield. I'm not a fan of his play calling. I really think – Agreed. We do a poor job of playing to the strengths of our offense, which, yes, there are strengths of our offense, but we ran the ball pretty well early on. Mm-hmm. We, had, we had a run, I think our first possession, we ran the ball for like six, seven yards on the first down. Second down, we do a little swing pass, and it, was just, <laughs> and it just wasn't a good, it wasn't a good idea. And we had right. one, we had one blocker. It, it was caught. It was just a loss of like three yards because yeah. we had one guy out there blocking, and they had multiple guys covering the play. So you got that just doesn't make sense to me as to why you have that type of play when they have that defensive coverage. And as a quarterback, is it your job to audible that play and find something different? I don't know. Agreed. But I felt like we ran the ball pretty well early on and we stopped running the ball. Well, and obviously it's a Big Ten road game. You're playing a team with an interim head coach. Mm-hmm. Uh, a lot of second stringer, third stringers. They were playing two different quarterbacks. I mean, we won the month of October, but... You know, those guys must have thought a little bit of, hey, these team, this team has lost five, six in a row, whatever it was. We're, we should be able to win this game. And yep. Michigan watched film because they played really good defense. Yep. Um, and obviously they figured that Harburg can't really throw it, so they stacked the box most of the game, and we yep. couldn't – eventually we weren't able to run the ball. And so they came in with a good game plan. And, yeah, and, and they executed. And they executed. And we didn't. And we did um, not. Dan, as you mentioned, you know, Dan, I think you're the one last week we talked about turning the ball over. We're not going to win another game if we do what we did last week. And again, we had what, four turnovers again? Well, and he threw an interception in the end zone that got called back for holding. I mean, we turned the ball over a lot. Yeah, we did. And, I, and the, the couple fumbles towards the end of the game were not good for us. That killed us. Um, I, we had the fact that we had still had a chance to win the game is amazing because with the amount of turnovers and that last fumble, we still had another chance to go down and win the game. And we just, you know, it just didn't happen. And again, I, I have to disagree with the offensive line uh, hate. 
and, and here's why. Are they great? No. Are they losing us games? No. No. They, they're not holding. We don't see a lot of false starts. They're not undisciplined. They're more disciplined this year than I think we've seen in, a, in probably four, five, six years. Yeah. Probably one of the most disciplined lines that we've had to where we're not making dumb penalties to give the team an opportunity. We opened plenty of holes yesterday on the line for running backs. Our running backs don't cut very well. They didn't find the holes very well. They don't cut yeah. early enough. Harburg, Harburg had to scramble very few times. He doesn't know how to get away from from pressure when it did come. No, and I think that not. I think that's what really killed us yesterday. It's not our offensive line that's losing us games. But are they great? No. Are they improved? Yes. But they didn't lose us. They have not lost us a game this year. No, and I mean, when Harburg puts his head down and runs, I mean, you, he you could see it. He had that long run that set up the last touchdown we yep. scored, but he's so hesitant. And even on the design runs, it's like just a step slow or yep. just a like that one step second is just behind a little bit. And, you know, when he does not have any options, you know, when, he, when, when yep. he's out there with no options, he waits just a second too long to start running. And then by that point, he's either sacked or barely gets back to the line of scrimmage when he could get three to five yards. And one, one of the times yesterday, he went down on the ground. He didn't even get tackled. He just went down. Yeah. He, he started like, act like he started to take off. And he just fell. But those were one of the times where it started to collapse. And instead of taking off, he waited still longer than he needed to before going down. Again, he just kind of fell down. But well, and I know they talked about this week about him sliding and giving himself up instead of holding on for for too long and yeah. fumbling, getting the ball knocked yep. out or fumbling. So that might have been in his head a little bit. Maybe. Um, but again, all the fumbles last week, interceptions this week. Just we got to protect the ball. Um, yeah. Brian, good question. Talking about our offense coordinator is—is is he inept, uh, or do we have players who just continue to make the same mistakes? Or I mean, both? I mean, I think it, I think both. I don't think our offense coordinator just designs yeah. the game well enough for us to win, and we don't make adjustments in the second half. You you cannot, to me, for Heinrich Harburg, who has a sidearm throw, you cannot run a receiver across the middle of the field. Um, you have to use your tight ends more, and we don't do a good job of using our tight ends as much as we probably should. Um, we have two that are very good. Or it seems forced when we do. Exactly. And so it's a second or third option rather than your first option. And so we're not using our tight ends to their strengths. We have wide receivers who, to me, I think are very good, very skilled, but we cannot get them the ball because when we go deep, he's overthrowing them or not throwing it on target. Um, and when we go shorter, crossing patterns, he's throwing behind them to where it makes it harder to catch the ball. Yeah. And they're inexperienced, so... I mean, it is what it is. One kind of frustrating thing was I understand why Billy Kemp was returning punts because we fumbled punt returns last week, and so it was just sure hand, we're going to catch the ball. But, I mean, he's catching the ball with nobody within 15, 20 yards of him and calling a fair catch because he's hurt. He's injured. He's just back there to catch the ball. Yeah. Um, That was kind of frustrating because we could have flipped some field position or got us in position to get some points on the board. Um but, again, you got to go shorthanded guy. I get it. Uh, special teams were not great yesterday. Um, Man, I, I tell you what. Again, you mentioned Billy Kemp. The only reason why he was in there was catch the ball. Yeah, the only reason. It. The one time he didn't come in was when Tommy Hill came in because they were further back in their end of the field, and we knew and we were getting an opportunity spark. to throw it. <laughs> we so needed, We needed to get in field position wise to score Catching some the ball inside. the t- If you're at the 10-yard line, if it goes over your head, well, don't catch it. And, that and he did that three, three or four times in the he game. He caught it at the six. Stop doing that. We've done that for like six, seven, eight years, and it drives me absolutely insane. We've talked about it on the show many times. It drives me insane. Stop catching the damn ball if you're at the ten yard line or inside the ten. Let it go. Just if they let hit it, it at go. the one, good for them. That's a lucky ass bounce if it ends up behind your head and it stays inside the ten. That's lucky. All those balls are going out. Yep. Um, Especially low, kind of line drive kicks. Yeah no hang time they're not gonna they're not gonna bounce back they're gonna go forward they're gonna go into the end zone so anyway so joel uh you know yeah we we do need to remember so yes i I believe rule knows what he's doing i i have nothing against matt rule uh what he what his plan is what his process is um patience absolutely and yesterday was one of those games where yeah michigan state wanted it more they played like they wanted it more their defense was stacked their offensive line played really well. Uh, we only got a couple sacks, I think. Um, they came to play, and we came 
to not lose, and we ended up losing because yep. we were too hesitant to do anything better. So Agreed. Um, quick slants kind of Ross, kind of like I mentioned with the quick slants, I think it's hard to do with the sidearm quarterback. You know, it's, he's, he's not Mahomes. And Mahomes can make some of those plays. Other NFL guys can make some of those throws. But that's not their normal throw. This yeah. is his normal throw unless he's throwing deep. And I think that's where we are. That's where we're in desperate need of a quarterback that can really hit our receivers. We definitely need to hit the portal hard. Yeah. Yeah. This and off season. And the question is, you know, you mentioned Purdy. Is not, I, I, I was calling for Purdy in the second half, but not towards the end of the game. At that point, it was too late. You don't take Harburg at that right. point. Let it. Let I know him. we were watching with some people, and they were like, "If you put Sims in," and I'm like, "No, no, you don't put Sims in. If you put anybody, you put Purdy." But they're coming in cold, yeah. And then you end up losing, and then you question why would you bring him in? Yeah, it's so almost like uh, you, yeah. it in, it's almost like in, you die on your own hill. You you yep. created this mess. You're gonna live with it, yep. just like uh, a lot of times in pitching in baseball. If you're in trouble, a lot of times they wait and take you out. They let you finish the inning because guess mm-hmm. what? You're not gonna win the game, or you're in deep enough trouble. Just let you finish. And that's part of just building yourself up as a player, and I think that's kind of Harburg as well. Um, and and I like Harburg. I'm not trying to harp on the kid. Yeah, um, he's he's won a lot more games than quarterbacks <laughs> for us in the last few years. Mm-hmm. I mean, that's for sure. Um, I, I don't know if we're play calling to his strengths necessarily. Yeah. I mean, he's not really a thrower, and we're. He's not really a packet, a pocket passer, and we're having him drop back, like that's, you know, to his strengths, and that's yeah. not really the way I see him. I mean, um, and nothing was working, so I get it. And here, here's why I don't understand too. Again, we're stick to the offense for a second. We'll switch, switch over to defense here in a minute. What I don't understand is one: when he gets the ball, when he gets the snap, he's going back like seven, eight yards on his drop. He's going back way too far. And then when you take those sacks, you're already ten yard. You're losing ten yards, and so right. he, he's not his his step backs are not right. I think someone needs to work with him on his his uh, two step three step drop back. His mechanics just yeah. aren't there, which throws off your well. Entire and game. I mean, even the announcers during the game yesterday. I mean, there was a play or two where they showed replays and they were like, ah, his footwork was really off here, and it's like, yeah. I mean, when you slow moat like that, yeah, big time. Um, Just something that, you know, it's a young guy. I get it. Uh, First-year coach, all new coaches, really. Sorry, it's a little loud. Maybe you can hear it. Maybe you can't. But um, uh, yeah, I don't know. We'll we'll get there. I mean, it's still year one. Yeah, and Dan, you mentioned you know Satterfield. He's not let go. I I don't think he will only because it's he his won't. first year. He's also working working with a very patched up offense. With we had two our two three offensive starters from the start. Two of the season. two wide receivers go down early in the year with season end injuries. Two running backs go down season end injuries. Three offensive linemen. Three offensive linemen. Like we are working Second and then quarterback. Bi- Billy Kemp is out for a couple weeks, so we're working with a lot of guys that are getting their first time playing. I still think there's a lot of talent on this team. Big time. I, mean, I think three those. I think again, the three Doss, freshman wide receivers, Doss, Lloyd, and Coleman. They're are awesome. going to be three They're of the best be in the awesome. Big Ten. They're really, really showing something for being first year guys. Yeah. For sure. Yep. So really Ross, impressed. yeah, Ross, good point. It's, again, it is patchwork. Not just in the off season, but in the in the beginning of the season when we have so many guys go down. Um, and you look at uh, so I, I don't have anything else about the offense. Again, I, I thought we should have ran the ball more. We didn't do that enough early on. We abandoned it early in the fourth quarter. I think it was about ten to twelve minutes left. And we decided, hey, we just gotta start throwing the ball. Yeah. I, at that point we didn't need. We were down ten. We didn't need to just start throwing, throwing, throwing. We still could have ran the ball more often. We still had three timeouts, and we stopped. That was frustrating. Yeah, it was. I mean, we, we hadn't been moving the ball, so I, I get it. Time was not in our favor, but we still ended up scoring and having a chance to yep. win the game, which was, quite frankly, unbelievable. Unbelievable. But I, I did hear that we are looking at a Porter quarterback, Portal quarterback <laughs> out of uh, Portal, 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 Portal. I just can't talk sometimes. Uh, quarterback from Tulane potentially uh, for a portal Tulane's quarterback. Tulane's ranked in the top twenty-five. Yep, college football player. Um, couple couple questions we're going to get to here on the show. Um, we'll, we'll hit the referees here in a second. Don't worry, guys. Do not <laughs> porthole. <laughs> porthole. <laughs> D- thanks, Daddy. Um, so, Brian, you had a couple questions. So, first, um, one name that enters the portal: Arch Manning. He's not getting playing time at Texas. And they have a redshirt freshman that played pretty well yesterday. Yep. Uh, and Quinn Ewers, I mean, he'll be back next year. Um, 
No, I thought the same thing. And we already got one from Texas who yeah. was pretty good last year. So we'll know. see. Uh, that could very well be somebody that is looked at. Uh, I, I don't know see, how good the kid is. I'd really yeah, know, but yeah, I don't know much about him. I mean, other than he's a man in. But I could see Rule building a pretty good relationship with him. But at the same time, you want to bring someone in with experience. I know. If, he, if he's going to be a potential backup, I think that's a good opportunity. But it's also going to be, is that what he wants? No. So we got to bring somebody in that's experienced. Not that Tanner wants. Lee. <laughs> oh, my <laughs> God. Uh, yeah, I don't, I don't think Satterfield Rule are on the same page. I, I don't. Um, you know what was interesting yesterday? I've never seen so much fire out of Matt Rule when he just absolutely oh drilled gosh. into Harbor. He was for the ripping inter- That Harbor. was the interception in the end zone that got called back because of holding. And he still ripped him. He ripped him because it was a horrible throw. It was. It was and, wide and open. It was the second time he did it where he threw to the end zone right to their guy instead of our guy that was wide open. Yeah. Maybe on that one he wasn't quite as wide open, but you know what I mean. Uh, do we try to find a pass-heavy quarterback? You know – that's never really been Nebraska football, but the way college football is nowadays, your run game is never going to be the strongest part of your game. There are teams that can, yeah, maybe one game you'll have 200, 300 yards rushing, but it doesn't come every game. You have to have a quarterback who Big Ten's can, tough. you can scramble, but you also can throw the ball. And Big Ten is tough because those defensive and offensive fronts are usually really tough. So I'd rather have a quarterback who can stay in the pocket but knows when to scramble, how to scramble. Not like a Tanner Lee who can't run. <laughs> I'd rather have a guy who can get out of the pocket and run, but also can throw the ball. You know, and that circles back to, you know, how does this season look if we have Casey Thompson? Yeah. Because he could drop back and throw. He could sling it. He could run if he had to. He didn't really necessarily, I don't think, want to. No. But he could. I didn't want him to. <laughs> and, I mean, it would be interesting to see how this – I mean, there yeah. were probably games Harburg won that he wouldn't have. But there's games Casey would have won that Harvard yep. didn't. So yeah, but but, but Brian, Brian, I absolutely glad to see a coach with fire. I mean the the fire yeah. that he shows on the the fire he showed on the sideline yesterday is something I don't think we've seen from Mike Riley or Scott Frost. And we saw Scott Frost pissed off at refs, but not pissed off at his players. And that's one thing that I didn't like about Frost is he never lit the fire under his players. And Matt Rule's doing it, but he's doing it because he has the respect of his players. He's doing it knowing this is going to be on national TV. But he's doing it in a different way. And, and you can see how how he's approached by the players when he's ripping Harburg. Harburg's shaking his head as he's coming over. He knew he screwed yes, sir. up. Yes, sir. He's yes, smart. Sir. He's smart enough to know he screwed up. He's not dumb. Oh, yeah. And again, Harburg is a, a very talented individual, but man, we gotta figure something out there. So Well, and it circles back to Bo. I mean, Bo was a little bit more intense. <laughs> he was yelling at referees and players. I've never seen but a coach I, as intense I, as Bo Pini, I know, but except that's, for maybe Nick Saban. But that's that's what I liked mm-hmm. about him. I know a lot of people didn't, but that was what he talked to guys like Kenny Bell and Brandon Kinney and Josh Williams. Those guys that yep. played for him. That's why they loved him so much. And that's why they were as good as they were. Absolutely. Because they played for the guy next to him. You know, they didn't want to get yelled at by the coach. <laughs> They didn't want their buddy to get yelled at, so they rallied together. Yep. Yeah, just camaraderie. That's yes, it. Camaraderie is exactly. the best. I know, I know that feeling. Let's talk about the defense now. So, again, we the offense was frustrating enough. Now, the defense, to me, was interesting about the defense. You could tell that very first drive by Michigan State, they watched film. Oh, big time. They were big they time. gutted us. And they that's why sliced said, and diced. Props, props, to, props to them for coming in prepared and with a good game plan. And you said they diced us up on that first drive. I thought the next drive or two uh, kind of fell back into place for us. Yeah. And I said, oh, they just designed a a really good first drive. But uh, all in all, they they picked us apart a little bit. They really came in prepared. Yeah. For, you know, a bad football team, if you will. A a team that is struggling, trying to find their feet, and they found it against us. Yeah, I mean, and again, that – they found a way to slice our defense up. Again, was like it no really not the entire that. game? And we still held them to three on the first drive. Um, but it's something that yeah. it's something that you know they had to get downfield, and they did, and they did really easily on our defense. We had um, uh, Omar did play yesterday. He, he was questionable. We and didn't have uh, Prince Well, which I think was I don't think it was a big step down, but you can see we didn't get that pressure that he sometimes gets. Cam um, Leonard played pretty well. Yep, he got Lennart, some Lennart played great. Uh, Williams played great again. 
That dude is that insane. That dude's a stud. He's insane. Did, did we talk about him being on the scout team? Did uh, yes, we talk about yes, that last we, week? I, I believe we did, but yes, he was on the scout team, and Matt Rule said, this kid needs to play. Yeah. <laughs> He's getting to he, our He told Tony White, he, he doesn't need to be on scout team. He needs to be on first team. Yeah. Get him up there. And Williams, he's super impressive. And he impressive. was playing in, like, big-time important spots, like, big plays he was in. You know, big and, important times of the game he was in. That, and I, and that, I, I really – says something. And I really don't think – our again, I think our open field tackling was still great yesterday. We had a lot of really good it open was. field tackles. The one, the one or two times that we didn't bring them down when we did actually wrap up, we had enough guys coming in around to make that tackle. Right. It's not – all right. Defense had had their had a bad day, but yeah. it wasn't a bad performance they, necessarily. They had a bad day it compared to what we've been seeing. What we've been seeing from them has been really, really good, really yep. impressive. Yep. Um, you're just talking third and eight, third and ten, multiple times, giving up pass plays yep. that got just enough yardage or, you know, first drive, they picked us apart. I mean, yep. they weren't – they weren't terrible, but they have just set a high, yeah. high enough standard that they didn't meet it. Yesterday. But even that, we don't. We gave it twenty points, and really, right. one of those. Uh, we'll get to the rest, but one of those touchdowns wasn't a touchdown. So it was not a touchdown. Uh, <laughs> it was not a touchdown. Not a catch. Still um, has not been caught yet. Um, but every scoring drive, like <laughs> Ross, like Ross says, that they got chunk yards. They got big plays. Yes. It wasn't the short. They weren't meticulously moving up the field like you see a lot of times in the Big Ten. They got chunk yards. They got 25, 15, 20, 25 yard plays, and that's what hurt us. And well, that, that ultimately and, did. And they were they were running the ball better than most teams have against us, minus Michigan, I guess. Um, they were just. I don't know. I think they just had a pretty good game plan. Yeah, they did what they needed to do to win the game. Yeah, and and again, yeah, we we kind of mentioned this. Um, uh, Donnie, I, I do think maybe we did overlook Michigan State a little bit. I did kind of mention that. It's a possibility, but as as Nebraska and what we've seen the last few years, we shouldn't overlook anybody. Plus, getting to the <laughs> I mean, get to a bowl game, I don't think. Yeah, I don't think so. But but we did we did a really good job of stopping the run though. Again, our rush defense was fantastic. I think they had one one big run. They went straight up the middle. Uh, and they again, their offensive line blocked us really well, and they went straight up the middle. But outside of that, that was their longest chunk play. Um, I, I just wasn't I wasn't uh, mad at our defense. Like a lot of people, are like oh, our defense had a horrible game. They just didn't play like they had been playing the last six weeks. I mean, that's just the biggest six seven weeks. That's the biggest difference. Yeah, it's not because they played a bad game. And, they just didn't play great. And honestly, they probably played well enough to win the game. The offense just did not. Yeah. And they still scored a touchdown that yep. hasn't been caught yet. And you know what sucked? We did not get a turnover yesterday. We didn't have an interception. We didn't get a fumble recovery. We didn't cause any ball. We didn't cause any fumbles. The closest we had was the the little uh, trick play they had to their uh, quarterback number four. When uh, was it? Om- no, it wasn't Omar Brown. It um, was Phelan, Yeah. No. Yeah, no, 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 no. I know which one you're talking yeah, about. Yeah, where he knocked it out yeah. of his hands. Yep. Yeah, it was failing. So. Uh, great play by Sanford there. I mean, just head on the ball. Uh, Alante Brown, damn you for your little trick play pass. That we happened. Talked, we've Congratulations. Talked, yeah, I mean, I honestly had completely forgot that he went too. to Michigan State. I did too. Because um, we've talked about him for the last few years. Just waiting for him to to break out. You know, he'd have a play here, a play there, and we'd be like, "Man, that's Alante Brown." Um, like, unfortunately, he was we, under Scott Frost's regime, yeah, so we, we we thought he'd break out at some point. And when he threw that pass yesterday, I'm like, <laughs> "They said, oh, that's Alante Brown," and I was like, "Oh my gosh, that's the Alante Brown, it's number zero. <laughs> yep. And yeah, I mean, that set them up for points early, but it did. Um, it did. It is what it is. I mean, I, I don't. I don't. I don't hate the kid by any yep. means. I mean, it's a shame he's not on our roster because he'd be playing. He'd be catching multiple passes a week yep. right now with the amount of injuries we've had. Yeah. So. Uh, that, that ball is very close to being tipped. Um, yeah, last week, again, defense you know wasn't as good as the stats said. Yeah, we, we left a lot of plays. I know Matt Rule said lot. that. He said last week that the defense didn't play as well as the stats looked. I thought the defense played better than that, but – you know. But again, like you said, Purdue did leave a lot on the field. They did. Um, I think Michigan State didn't leave anything, didn't leave anything off the field. I think they brought everything they could. They're just not that good, and we just didn't play good enough offensively to win yeah. that game. Yeah. But that's what it comes down to. I mean, really, offensive side of the ball. You, again, you turn the ball over as much as we did, you're not going to win. Yeah. You just, it's impossible. You just can't win games like that. 
No, totally agree. Um, Especially in a low-scoring game like that on the road. It's time to talk about officiating. Uh, we, yeah. well, oh, hold on, hold on, before we get there. Special teams, we talked a little about that, but, man, Bushimi, Bushini, awful. Yeah, awful. He, he had a rough day yesterday. We, and, and their punter was kicking 50 every time. We get, they had one bad punt. We had, like, four bad punts. But he gave them the ball. We got They had the ball on their side of the 50 twice yesterday. Mm-hmm. And, again, you're putting your defense in a very tough spot as the special teams. You just can't do that. Yeah, it was really, really tough because – He's very, very inconsistent. He can kick a 55-yarder. He kick a 17-yarder back-to-back. And yeah. the one punt he had, he kicked it, and he, like, spun around. And I'm like, well, well that went about 13 yards. Yep. And one of them they did get a fingertip on yeah. towards the end of the game. Yeah. Um, but, again, like, we, we have to have more consistency on the special team side of the ball when we're kicking. I just – and I, I don't like that we lined up as if we were going to kick an onside. And instead, we did like a little pooch kick, but we kicked it right at the player that was down there. Right. Instead of trying to kick it in the middle of the field, field to where we have an opportunity to go get the ball, which I think is what they wanted to do, but he kicked, but it, kicked right it right to the Michigan State guy. That that was such a horrible I don't play, know and if, I don't understand why. In a, in a situation like that, if you're trying to pretend like you're going to do an onside kick, and that's then, what it was. No, I know. And then you're gonna and then you're gonna actually kick it. If when your vision goes to it, you see. A figure, and that's just like okay. I got to kick it to it. You know what I mean? Like I'm gonna run up and I'm gonna fake him out, and I'm just gonna kick. But then your mind just goes to, well, I got to kick it there. Oh shoot, I kicked it right to that guy. You know what I mean? Yeah. That's. I mean, I don't, but I'll, I, I'll, I, I don't know. <laughs> maybe. No, that made any sense to me, Jimmy, at all. You that's, see a it figure. Makes so much sense in my head. <laughs> you see a figure, and you just want to go right there. No, I have no idea what you mean. I really don't. Uh, anyway, no, yeah, but but again, I just I don't understand even lining up in that way. Like, plenty of time left in the game. We weren't. They knew we weren't kicking an onside. That would have been the dumbest thing we could have done. I know. When we lined up, I was like, "What are we doing?" Yeah. Uh, yes, the band aid buggy's going by, Casey. <laughs> <laughs> Heard the sirens. Oh. Um, really? Yeah. Okay. So Sorry. I, again, I, it was frustrating. Special teams was frustrating. Offense was frustrating. Defense wasn't as good as they've been. Let's talk about the refs. Yeah. Oh my gosh! I'm How s- I'm still gonna say it was probably our worst game that we played all season, um, just in every aspect. But we still could have won that game if it wasn't for the officiating. Um, I, I don't typically blame a loss on the referees. My dad was a referee for thirty plus years, and that's not why we lost. But even and that's not why we lost. But momentum. M- yeah. Talk about the no catch in the end zone. That was not a catch. Dean Blandino was spot on again. He said, you know what, rules analyst, Brian loves Dean, Dean Blandino. Yes. It, he said that's not a catch. The ball, his hand, his fingertips are under it, not his hand, his fingertips. That's not possession. That's not having control of the ball. He did not have control and went down. I had Iowa people messaging me saying, how did they call that a touchdown? Yeah. I mean, it just it, – it was not – a touchdown and so that's that's frustrating that that guy called a touchdown they even reviewed it the ref that comes out he goes and after review the the play stands it's like <laughs> is that what you were supposed to say yeah you got somebody in your ear yeah there? like i don't think that was supposed to happen um but so that was brutal and then we had a face mask that again we talked about the face mask that well, didn't get called that almost ripped that his didn't head get off called as it happened live it yes. was pretty quick I was like, oh, he got a face mask. And then Harbert gets up, and he's kind of doing this. And then they showed that that ref, the, the main ref, the white hat. And he goes, he says something along the lines of, like, he didn't get it. No, it, he, he didn't touch it. And then they show the replay, and his head got snapped back like freaking Eric Crouch yeah. against K-State. <laughs> Casey just said that the ref telling him that it wasn't a face mask. Yeah, what are you looking at? Yeah, the QB is your job, and he didn't do his job. Um, and there wasn't any, like, it wasn't like there was pressure on him. It was not like there was yeah. a bunch of bodies around no. him. It was wide One open. Guy. One guy. And you missed it. And when, you're, when your neck jerks back as hard as it did, I mean, there's no way you missed that. There's no way you missed that. And, and I don't know, maybe face mask is something that's going to become reviewable in the future. Because yeah. when something as blatant as that, I don't know how you don't call that a 15-yarder. Well, and that's, like, injury-wise. Oh, yeah. I mean, it, that, that can be a pretty big significant injury oh yeah i think it should be 
um, or at least have a challenge for it where you can lose a timeout yeah. or something. Or, and it shouldn't even be. It shouldn't even go down to review. You should have someone in it the booth that buzzes down. That buzzes down and says, "Hey, that was a face mask." Well, you could do that. Uh, you could do a lot of that in college football. Yeah. And I don't understand why they're not using that technology. Holy crap! Before we go into anything else, yesterday in the Washington USC game, if Did you not watched watch it, it, so there was a play where they said the Washington player was short of the first down on the catch. Which I'm like watching. I'm like, nah. He clearly went over the first down line. Mm-hmm. They showed a view right down the line, and they had a red line on the TV as if there's a laser shooting down the line, exactly where the first down marker is. Mm-hmm. The technology is there. Right. There's zero well, reason why you need to go and, to replay, and they went to replay and still to call them short. No, he he got the first down, oh, it was, and it was very obvious on the replay from the red line that he was over. So I'm like, why is this tech? Like, use the technology to your advantage rather than increasing the timing on the games. So I, it, well, it was exactly. very obvious. And, and to circle back on this, I mean, I, we'll have to read some of these comments, but the last drive we had, we threw the ball for a first down. In yeah. my opinion. Yes. We threw yes. the ball for a first down. He caught it. They ended up – and I'm like, why is the clock running? The clock stops at first downs when – and there was like 25 seconds left. 30 seconds. 30. And they, they showed him short. And then they showed the catch – and he was like a yard and a half past the first down yeah. marker. And they called him a yard short. And I'm like, that just depleted the entire situation, the entire drive. That, there that was a great throw. It, it, yeah, it was. And there was just so many mistakes. Well, so many mistakes. And the most frustrating thing about that is you don't even go and re- you don't stop the clock to review it. Every single game you watch in college football, they stop the clock. They for, will they stop, stop it for everything and review it. Guess what? If it's not a first down, you put the ball on the mark and clock runs on my signal for the ref. They didn't do that. The refs were so bad. That was a first down for one. The TV even moved the markers as if it was a first down. Right, and then it was like they ended up having to move the chains back. Yes, and it took more time. It was just they 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 screwed up the end of the game. Not only that, let's we talk about... We could have gotten in field goal range, I'm just let, saying. We could have. We could, And I was excited. I'm like, Alvaro's going to come in. He's going to tie the game up. Yes. I was pumped for him. But let's not only talk about that. Let's talk about the very, very obvious pass interference call. That was it, was... it was a tackle. The dude ran into Malachi Coleman without even looking for the ball, without even trying to yes. catch the ball. He could have intercepted it. But instead, he just runs over. He's got a guy on his backside. Here's Coleman, guy on the backside. This guy, boom, runs into him. And the ball goes right there. He, ju- he literally jumped into him with his butt, <laughs> into his chest. How do you not call that pass interference? That was, it the, was the worst non-call I think I've seen. Easiest in, pass interference in, call in, in the long, history of college in, football. In a long time. That, that was, was the easiest call you could have made. the worst I've seen missed. And Matt Rule, I would have gotten a third. I would have gotten thirty yard penalty on that one. Yep. Two personal. I would have been in the ear of the ref. I would have cursed him out, and then I would have gone to the other ref he and has cursed him. A little him. bit more resolve than than you and I do. And God. he was like, "I'm not going to put my team in that Just situation." Unbelievable but, how they don't call that. Yeah. And you know what's funny? And then we threw an interception on the next play. Yes. Which was yeah. It was a terrible throw, but it's just a swing of events. Yeah. That's just the way the game went. And I know you text at one time and you said, I just don't feel confident today. And, I did. And I was staying positive at that point, but I felt what you yeah, what you felt. And, and it just <laughs> felt that way yesterday. Ross, that might have been the first time the announcers actually had their back for Nebraska and said anything positive <laughs> about Nebraska yeah, was they, on that pass interference because they were god-awful too. They were, yeah, they were talking Michigan State up, and I'm like, they're 2-6, and six. they lost 5 or 6 But But row. they were also very confused on the non-first down call. They were very confused. Like, they were. I, I just because it was a first down. <laughs> They've never seen anything like that. Again, the, the refs, no, they don't determine the outcome, but they can sway the momentum. And ultimately, I, I mean, yesterday, again, we, we could have won that game if the refs didn't, F up as much and, as they and, did. I mean, who's to say that Michigan State doesn't score a touchdown on that on that drive or, you know, the, get a field goal on that drive? Exactly. I mean, you know. And we, who's we, to we, say we, we go down to score again? And, and yeah. they would have killed more time on the clock. So it's hard to say exactly what would have played out after that. But that ball hit the ground. Yes. <laughs> uh, it's still on the ground. Yeah. It's, it's still on the ground <laughs> today. Um, yeah, Kara, yeah, good point. It was just a bad day all around. It really was. Well, I disagree. For Husker football, yes. For the rest of college football, Notre Dame lost. 
All right, that was, that, you know, then we had Wisconsin and Minnesota lost. Yeah, which is great for us. I mean, if so Northwestern would have won, it probably would have been best case scenario there. But yeah, Do- um, Donnie, you're right. We, c- we keep trying to say that they didn't impact the outcome of the game, but they yesterday is really probably did. the first time where they could have impacted the out- out- uh, outcome of the game. And that was porthole. Pr- the porthole. <laughs> that was probably the most frustrating is the refs really did impact the game in a major way when it came to momentum swings and dr- and sustained momentum down the field and good drives. And well, that was a killer. And, you know, early on, too, the offense wasn't great, but we were lucking out with Michigan State's penalties because they kept holding mm-hmm. and everything. I mean, one of our drives, we got points on the board basically because M- Michigan State got penalties. Yeah. And, I mean, who's to say that we wouldn't have caught the pass, but – it was probably an overthrow that we, we got lucky hold call on yeah on the defensive side so we we were able to to get into field goal range and get a field goal and yep score a touchdown whatever but and, and I want to give a quick shout out I think it was uh, maybe Huntington who uh, who commented from the Hawkeye podcast um, love Jason He's yeah a great so dude. appreciate you guys uh, tuning in today and um, uh, your comments so far down the way maybe Brian can throw it up on the screen here but um, you know, he commented during the show today. He did, yeah, and I missed it. Jason, we were just in a ro- on a roll. Let's chat, brother. This um, Iowa Nebraska game could be real interesting in a few weeks. It, it really could, and that's here. I'm going to pull it up here for a second. Um, but that game, as Ross just said, that really could be the West could be determined by that game. It really could. It really could be, and so I'm I'm excited to see, especially if we can beat Wisconsin. Yes. I mean, shoot, uh, if we beat Maryland and beat Wisconsin. Then that's definitely going to come down to that game. Uh, let's see, damn, the game was yes. You say Jason? I Jason think so. Hunting in, he is a Hawkeye fan. Right. Um, uh, probably went in spam folder. <laughs> <laughs> probably, went, probably went into spam. That's funny. Um, you know, yeah, Oklahoma did lose in Bedlam last yes. Bedlam. OT. Uh, that was a crazy game. It was. Um, but you know, Iowa. Yeah, Iowa does have to lose and. You know they got they got a ten to seven game yesterday. Their offense was stellar once again. I was um, say who do they got the rest of the way? I don't know. I don't have their schedule, but they do have to lose. We do have to win out. We um, have, oh, we definitely have to win. So out. Brian Blackwell, you asked earlier, like out of the three remaining games, who do we feel we can we're going to win? Here's the thing. Just like we said after we were, you know, five and three, we can win every game. We can lose every game. Yeah. We may not win another game. Do I really feel that way? No. I absolutely feel like we're going to beat Maryland. I absolutely I think, feel like we're going to beat Wisconsin. I and I 100% believe we're going to beat those Hawkeyes or the Golden Finches, however you want to prefer to them, you know. I think playing at home will be will help two out of the last three. I think we can beat Maryland this next week. Um, Wisconsin on the road. Yeah. Who knows? We haven't um, beat Wisconsin in like eight years. Yeah. Um, Iowa at home. We beat them on the road last year. So, Who had minus 74 rushing yards yesterday? Is that Iowa? Okay, so you can't be real. No way. <laughs> no way. Minus 74 yards rushing. They take that many sacks? Holy cow. <laughs> not, not really. <laughs> Man, you got to be Maryland. Okay. okay. Oh, they did. No, I, I think you're saying Maryland. Oh, we, yeah. I, I think we beat Maryland. I think Wisconsin, again, is a toss-up. Iowa, again, I feel – I don't know why I feel so confident that we're going to beat Iowa again. I really don't. Uh, maybe because we're at home. I mean, maybe that's why I feel better about this year than I did we you know, recent years. We can get a little years. bit of offense going, and if our defense doesn't play like they did yesterday. Yeah. <laughs> Iowa's got Rutgers, Illinois, and us. They play Rutgers and Ooh, Illinois. Ooh, Illinois could home. beat them. Illinois. <laughs> Rutgers very well could, too. I mean. Illinois could win the freaking West, dude. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Jake, 100%. If we beat Iowa to go bowling, we lose our next two, then we beat Iowa, I'd be 6-6. Six and six. We go to a bowl game. I'd be happy. Is that what I want to happen? So, no. Unfortunately, your nine and three is not there anymore. Shut up. But the seven but the, and five is still right my, there. My seven and five prediction is still there. Seven and five is still there. Again. Um, and once we get number six, which we will, Jimmy and I are Stone Cold Steve Austin some beers. <laughs> All right. We're, let's do it. It's going to be messy. It might be a little <laughs> bit colder than today. Hopefully do they right out here. Hopefully they win next weekend because next weekend I think it's supposed to be decent, and then it's just going to get really cold after that. I get my wisdom teeth out this week, oh. so we'll see how I can do next weekend. We'll you see. don't actually have to drink any beer; it's just going on your face more than anything else. If I get a little in me, that'd be good. Yep. 
Um, but no, I, I, you know, it, it was frustrating. I think, again, you're looking at going into the season with Matt Rule. You look at what he did at Temple. You look at what he did at Baylor. Yeah, they showed it. One, One win, win, two, two wins. wins. And now he's at Nebraska. He's already five and four. We're above 500. We haven't been above 500 at this point in the year in quite some time. So, you Should know, we have won yesterday. Yes. Again, but we've won a couple of games that we probably wouldn't have won in the past few years already this year. So five and four right now. Yeah. With the chance to win a couple of games, maybe even win the West is better than the the chance. The chance is good. If we win, our, if we win our next three games, we beat Iowa. We can win the West. Then I don't even know if I want to watch the Big Ten West or the Big Ten Championship game. But I'm not sure anybody wants to watch the yeah, Big Ten do, Championship game. Do we game really? This year. Do we really want to be there? Um, it's a yes and no. That's the thing that sucks. It's a 50-50. You want to win the Big Ten West for the first time being in the Big Ten? And the, last, the first time since being in the Big Ten? Last time. That but do you want to get whooped be the West up? Because it's just going to be a free-for-all next year. Yeah. And we have to play what? UCLA and USC in back-to-back weeks? Yeah, but they're coming to play the Big Ten. And USC is now a three-loss team. And Caleb Williams was crying in his mama's lap after losing to Washington like he got spanked around yesterday, <laughs> which he actually didn't even have a bad game, which is kind of funny. But he lost 52 42. Yeah, I mean, it, that was a, actually a really decent game. And just, again, high powered offense, no defense. So they're coming into a Big Ten with a lot of defense, which is going to be really interesting when you get these teams coming in. Um, I, I'm interested to see what happens. I'm excited to welcome yeah, them. Because honestly, when we came in, I thought we'd I thought yeah. we'd run the show, and we and look, obviously have not. Ooh, look what Oregon said. They said, "Hey, you're gonna have to adjust to us." Well, we tried that once. It didn't work. <laughs> um, yeah, I don't know. I I would. Uh, I'm curious. Uh, UCLA did lose to Arizona, so Arizona's got a couple wins on their shoulder back to back weeks. They're six and three. Yes. They're not. They're not bad. And I believe now, correct me if I'm wrong, Casey. They beat two ranked teams now. Their last two they weeks. They beat Oregon State. Was it Oregon State? And then I think they did. It was Oregon State yesterday, wasn't it? Yeah. No, Oregon State beat Colorado yesterday. Oh, that's what it was. They beat UCLA Ari- yesterday. Arizona beat Oregon State last week. Yes. So, I mean, hell, that's great. That's great for them. Uh, I'm actually really happy for Arizona because, again, any, anytime you can take out some ranked teams, it's always fun to watch. It's very good games. They're playing some good football right now. Yeah, the Big 12 um, is going to be interesting next year. Ross, I love your positivity. Yes, we want to win the West. Again, I would love to win the West. Yeah, I mean, and if we get saying, blown out, oh, I don't want to go to the Big Ten Championship to get beat, to get beat up. You at the Big Ten Championship? Yeah, you know, we'd love to be there. It also doesn't matter who plays in the big, from the Big Ten West to go to the Big Ten East for that championship game. They're going to get murdered. Yeah, they're going to they're, they're going to get murdered. I mean, you always say that, and the score well, might murdered. The, the score might end up showing that down the stretch, but usually in those games early on, it's it's kind of tight. Mm-hmm. I mean, even Northwestern, who has yeah. played in the last couple of years, and they kept it tight with Michigan or whatever it was. Yep. Um, well, oh, if, if it's if it's us, you're playing at diff- you're playing a Michigan team at a different time of year. Hopefully, we again the next three weeks. Well, it's obviously going to be Michigan because they know everybody's place. So <laughs> Stallions not, they, over so there with you know watching. Stallions got fired. But, no, well, he said he resigned. Oh, okay. Which, you know, believe what you want to believe. But, um, you know, it's – I don't know. I just, Again, I would love to win the West. We have not won the Big Ten West since we joined the Big Ten. Well, we won, Well, uh, we did when we went um, Riley's second when, year. When, no, when it was leaders and legends, we, we went to the Big Ten Championship in 2011 or whatever it was. And – Ohio State uh, suspended. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Penn State suspended. <laughs> so we yeah. beat Wisconsin early that year on a comeback that we mm-hmm. shouldn't have won. Mm-hmm. And then they put 70 on us. Yep. That was the Kenny Bell block. Freaking Rain Man over here. Kenny Bell block. Um, Look it up. Yeah, I would, you know, I, I again, we're always positive. I <laughs> am excited that we are over 500. I'm excited that we have an opportunity to win three more games. And yeah. Not only that, not only do we have the opportunity, we have every capability of winning three more games. Our offense is good enough. Heinrich Harburg, you are good enough to win those games as a quarterback. Offensive line, wide res- we are good enough both offensively and defensively to win the games if we hold on to the damn ball. <laughs> I was going to say. If you have one turnover, that's fine. You have four tur- turnovers, we will not win Two well, more games, and I want to hear. I want to say the the talk this week was um, 
just how unconventional it was that we won all those games in October being like minus two or three in every game in the turnover margin. That's not happened since like, I don't know, 30, 40 years. Yeah. Um, if ever, yeah. I mean, normally, especially in like close tight big 10 games and you're mm-hmm. minus three and you yep. win by seven, you know, that doesn't happen. <laughs> yeah. Again, it's, it's amazing that the fact that we're over 500 with the amount of turnovers we had this year is incredible. Um, I, you know, it, it is what it is. How is it that we have four different coaching staff <laughs> over the last 15 years and we turn the ball over more than anybody? Yeah. With all different coaching staffs. Donnie, have I... Have you ever I, seen the program? <laughs> Walk around the campus with a ball in your hand yeah. all freaking day long. If somebody knocks it out, you're in trouble. Yeah. Anyway, sorry, Donnie. I was going to say, Donnie, I, I wish without knowing what the consequences are going to be. I just, it is what it is. I'm not careful with my wishes. <laughs> There's no genie granting me three wishes. Um, <laughs> again, fun, again I, yes, I am looking forward to next year. Carrie, you mentioned, excited for next year. Again, we're ahead of schedule for Matt Rule, for his normal processes and how he runs his teams and the expectations. Again, right now, we are ahead of expectations. So, yeah, I, that's all I, I got to say. I agree. We yeah, still have a lot to work on. Nobody nobody expected us to be perfect. No Husker fan expected us to be perfect. Here's the thing. Look, look at Colorado. They lost again. Now you have – they've – again, everyone thought Dion was going to be a great savior for Nebraska. He would have been a much better hire. I strongly disagree. Yep. He's a coach that's throwing his coaches under the bus. He's throwing his offensive line under the bus. He cares about one thing and one thing only, protecting his son at quarterback. Yep. And that's going to be gone going to after this year. Absolutely destroy so him. So then what? And Hunter's going to be gone too. Yep. So then what? I know he's like, now it's a, re- now, you know, we're talking rebuild and this and that. And I know they've had some four or five star guys commit there. But, I mean, when it comes down to it, how, how long are those kids going to stay when yeah. things, when, when you run into a little bit of adversity? When Dion runs into a little bit of adversity and he yeah. starts putting the blame elsewhere yep. like he is now yep. I mean how long are guys going to stay how long are guys going to block for his son you know I mean yeah. there's just a bunch of different aspects that no I totally side with Matt Rule over Dion 100% yep. even if this year doesn't I mean we're already in a better spot than we were last year Matt, Matt Rule has a system in place that he knows he wants to do and that's not something that a lot of uh, well a guy like Dion has that system in mental place mental capability so yeah no you're right <laughs> you're right and his, his mental capacity again his thought process is offensive line's not working i'm gonna get rid of all of them and bring in all new offensive linemen that's not how you co uh, you can't that's... do that because at the, even at the pro level again we've seen husker linemen go pro again nick gates i will I he will was talk terrible about he was awful in he nebraska. Was terrible and in then nebraska he ends up being the starting center for the new york giants i mean I, and I don't get that, but that I mean, is the very big difference on a good coach and a coach that is not quite there, and he's there for one – again, he's there for his son. He wants his son to be successful, and he's showing that as a coach in some of the decisions he's making. And well, that it, that sucks. for it, And it sucks for Colorado players that came there to play for him that wanted to be successful, and they're, start, they're probably starting to realize it's not about me. It's, oh, no. it's never been about me. No. And it is a pretty funny narrative from about a month, nah, maybe a month and a half ago, within a month. Uh, Dion's going to be he, – he's going to coach in the NFL next year. Yeah. Now they're four <laughs> and five. They were going to go to yeah. the college football playoff a month and a half ago. Yeah. 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 And Sanders was the Heisman front runner. No. Yeah. He's not a top ten QB in college football. And he's still freaking running out of bounds so he doesn't – he's running out of bounds on third down instead of – Brian, for a loss me. instead of throwing the ball away yeah so he keeps his completion percentage it's yeah. truly incredible right but we'll, we'll see what happens here's the thing we'll see what ha- a good toss uh okay. but again next few years we'll see what happens i think next year next year's gonna be <laughs> next year's gonna be interesting to see what we do we got him next year's gonna be interesting to see how we do because again we are coming off a year hopefully to where we finally go bowling and then from there See what we do in the offseason. How hard do we hit the portal? 
Yes, offensive linemen need to be a uh, something we hit in the portal. A quarterback, absolutely. Um, running backs, I think we're going to be fine. Wide receivers, yes. I think we still have three, four really strong wide receivers, but we're still going to need more. Let's yeah, get them in. I mean, we might have to, you know, do a special during the off season of just kind of breaking down what players we're going to. Oh what, yeah. What players we're losing? Um, what we have coming back? See if there's guys that leave. Yep. With the portal, guys come in and just kind of see what we think about next year the way it's going to look. Um, I think we need to get a quarterback. Yep. 100%. Daniel Kalen. I, I hope he. Yeah. I hope he could be t- could be potentially pretty good. Um, <laughs> but the way that they got waxed against Westside this week. Hey, Westside man, Westside is just and I they're don't know. so good. I think uh, Kalen still, good, still hasn't hasn't gone anywhere quarterback yep. wise for Westside. So yeah, if we could have him and Kalen come in, that'd be great. Battle, we need a battle, and we need a transfer. So, all right, we're at the end of the show. We had a lot of people on the show today, a lot of comments, oh, a lot shoot. of regulars, which has been great. Open up the NIL books and get us guys who can throw the ball on a rope. Hundred percent. Cornhusker Nation, we we need, man, you know, it, before we do the, the last giveaway, it, it is frustrating. We talk about this with my brother sometimes. And what's interesting, you watch other college football games and you watch the quarterbacks, you watch the plays, you watch the defense. It's like, I watch Husker games. Why does it seem so different? Why? Well, it seems like we're like a JV squad and the rest are varsity. Yeah. And, it does, and, and honestly, it doesn't matter. I'm not talking about even your top tier programs. I'm talking about. Teams that are not even just anybody but Nebraska. I feel like we're at a slower pace. I feel like we're not playing as well. I'm like Nebraska can't make that play. But, but is it, Vanderbilt just did that, or Arkansas did Arkansas that? Arkansas beat against Florida. Florida. But did, it, did they win? I, I don't know. They were winning last I saw. But I think the maybe it's because we're so critical of our team. Yeah, it, it, Casey does it. It almost seems like it's boring to watch Nebraska play. Is it the Big Ten? Is it our pace of play? I don't know. It's it's interesting. What's up, Mike? What's up, Mike? <laughs> Jimmy. Um, yeah, money. Let's open up those books, though. We, we really do need to throw the books out there. Um, we really do need to open up the NIL money. It's there. It's there. It is there. We got to open it up. I mean, you got SMU, Utah, these schools that are yeah. giving brand new Ford trucks away to every player on the team. Scholarship player. Every scholarship player. Every sorry. non-scholarship player gets a ride. <laughs> <laughs> they I'll, get to, I'll pick your ass up. <laughs> or they get to be their Uber driver. <laughs> you got to pay me. After the games. Yeah. All right. yeah. All right. uh, no, track. you know, I, I just, oh, man. We got to do it, though. There's a lot of things we can do differently. There's a lot of things we can do to have fun. Uh, yeah, if, if Missouri can get to almost top 10, 100%. And D- Daniel Kalen committed to Missouri. 110% committed to Missouri. Yeah, and 110. Then he backed out and came, came to Nebraska once. Uh, um, once yeah, Dylan and fell through. friggin' K, KU football should never be better than Nebraska football. I'm saying it right here, right now. <laughs> KU should never be better than Nebraska football. I'm talking to you, Chris. Um, it just shouldn't happen. <laughs> Tim. It really shouldn't. Tim. And Tim. And Tim. K, KU might be ranked ahead of Notre Dame tomorrow or Damn. Tuesday, whenever those yeah, come out. Yeah, because Notre Dame got slapped around by 4-4 four and four Clemson yesterday. Pretty rough. Even though Clemson was running the clock out and fumbled and yep. gave Notre Dame one more chance. Yep, pretty rough. All right, guys, we got we to get going today. Love you guys. Appreciate going joining the show. We do have, again, two giveaways. Two giveaways. First giveaway is going to be for another hat. So anybody who's commented today, anytime you've commented, your name's been entered into the drawing. So we are going to do our first giveaway. And we're going to do yeah. it right now. Yeah, I like it. I think Brian's better. ready. First one's a hat. Yep. So this is for a hat. Let's see what we do here. We're gonna we're a little delayed, so take us a second. I look fat. <laughs> Same. <laughs> <laughs> no, you got a sweatshirt on. You're real bulky. Look sweat. I guess. I like Almost the mom. It was. So close. So close to Mary J, but it didn't it wasn't Mary J. Let's see, we got the wheel coming up on our end. I don't know if you've seen it on your end already. No, nope, hold on. 
You guys probably see it ahead of us. Come on. What? Stephanie Schuich. Schuich. Stephanie who? How do you spell it? S C H E U C H. Stephanie, you're our first winner of our hat. Congratulations. Woo! Whoop, whoop. Mary J almost won it. Is that what you said? Yes. Stephanie, Sorry, congratulations. Mom. We will reach out to you and uh, get your address so we can send you your hat. Congratulations. All right. I'm frozen on my end, Brian, yeah. so. Are you doing a Tumblr? Yep. And the next giveaway is our two average guys Tumblr. I don't know which one's better. They're both pretty sweet. They're both pretty awesome. Yeah, we're just frozen. Huh. Hey, Casey, we still frozen? Casey said we're frozen. You see everything, Brian? Oh. Right now. Go you see us? Okay. Yeah. Oh, there we go. Okay, cool. We're not frozen. All right, hold on. So, yeah. <laughs> Ross, if you win, we will sign your shit. Absolutely. <laughs> Absolutely. All right, hold on. Yeah, we, we can see now. So, we got our hat giveaway. Went to what? Stacy, right? Stephanie. 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 Sorry. Um, and our second winner. Our second winner is? I can't see. <laughs> Jimmy's playing with his hat. You bet, brother. All right, here we go. Second winner, second winner. No whammy, no whammy, no whammy. Just play with his hat. Let's see who we got. All right, who's our winner? No, nah, I got the number. Oh, hold on. Here we go. And our winner is uh, lucky number 17. Ross. Ross. Oh, my gosh. Ross, you're kidding me. <laughs> oh, my gosh, Ross. We'll sign it, Ross. We're going to sign your Tumblr. We'll have to get a white Sharpie, I guess. Yes. Or gray, and, gray or whatever, silver. Whatever. And Ross, hey, reach out. To, if you would rather have a hat and us sign the hat, we'll absolutely do that. Let us know. Send us a message. Oh, my gosh. Bang Biscuit. I love it. <laughs> so, Ross. Yeah, I don't know, Ross. Absolutely love whatever it. Whatever you want, let us know. If you want the hat, we'll sign a hat. We'll send it to you. If you want the, the mug, we'll sign that, too. We'll get a silver permanent marker. We'll send it to you. And then Congratulations. We, Got to get together, Ross, like we've talked about. We have. We have. We'll, we'll do it. Shit's rigged. <laughs> hey. <laughs> I love it. Hey, listen up. Hey, the hat is awesome. The sweat, the shirts are awesome. Um, again, we'll do more giveaways. Uh, if you guys are in the Omaha area uh, and you want to come check us out on the 18th. Come the to Backswing, bro. Backswing Brewing on the 18th against Wisconsin. We're going to be at uh, Backswing Brewing. We're going to do some live giveaways there. We're going to have a couple more tumblers. We might have a couple hats. We might do some giveaways where, hey, we don't have it in stock there at the venue, but we will order it for you and send it directly to your house. Or just so, watch the game with us and see how crazy we are during out. the game. Hang out. We like to have fun. We like to drink some beer. So uh, thank you so much for joining us today, everybody. Absolutely enjoy it. Again, we, we sucked yesterday. Didn't play well. The refs sucked yesterday. But it was a sucky day. We're above 500. We have a lot to look forward to over the next few games. Let's get at least one more, if not three. Ooh, a pint glass. Mike, all right, you gotcha. We are going to have some koozies at our uh, uh, our in-person uh, event at Backswing as well. And you might be able to win a pint glass we, or two yeah. from Backswing. We have a grill, set, a grill set with an apron for husbands. A grill set? Hell yeah. So we got some fun stuff coming. Um, so definitely join us at Backswing in a couple weeks. We'll be back next Sunday. Uh, enjoy the rest of your day. Enjoy the beautiful weather, no matter where you're at. If you have snow, I'm sorry for you. Uh, beautiful day here in Omaha. Uh, have a great rest of the day. I'm Matt. I'm Jimmy. We're two average guys. Go Big Red. We'll see you next time.
Look at him. Look at him. Look at my face. I just got my head. It's my face. I'm like, what the fuck? I'm confused. Football. <laughs> it's true. I like that, Brian. All contests are rigged for Oscar fans. <laughs> That was good. <laughs> that is funny. You know what I love is we have a lot of the same people that join us every week. Yeah. We have a B? It's too cold. Go away, yeah, B. Yeah, what the hell? The more often you comment, the more likely you are to get it. Which Ross kind of came in late. Yeah. yeah. Casey commented a lot. I'll say, we should have fucking hit a cigar today. Yeah. Dude, I haven't smoked a cigar in a while. I haven't I smoked a cigar since then. I didn't yeah. smoke a single cigar. Uh, when we went golfing at Panorama. Damn. Oh, we're so loud.